Hey everybody, this is John Carter. I am the founder of Simpler Trading. And I want to talk about the biggest trade of my career, which took place recently over the dates of March 11th, 2021 into April 6th, 2021, and ultimately turned out to be a $5 million trade on Google. Basically meaning that when I got into the trade and then I got out of the trade in my Thinkorswim account and my Tastyworks account, by the time the dust settled, I'd made over $5 million, which was amazing, of course. But what's different about this one, and the reason I'm kind of going through this presentation, is that this was probably also the hardest big trade I've ever made, meaning that there was definitely a couple times that I'd almost thrown in the towel. Uh, if you guys have followed me for any length of time, you'll know that last year I had uh, a couple of big seven-figure trades on Tesla. The most notable one was a $3.7 million trade. That one was not as hard because I only had it for three days. But you'll notice here I was in this trade for almost a month. All right, so that's kind of what I want to talk about because there's a lot of you know, psychology that comes into play here. And, and how do you know when to keep holding on to a trade when especially um, you know, initially it's not even working, right? So let's just kind of dive into that. So what is the backdrop of this? In general, um, I, you know, I, I talk about like, yeah, ideally, if the markets are quiet and there's nothing really going on, you know, I'm trying to grind out two and a half percent a week. You can make a nice living at two and a half percent a week, but against the backdrop of that, I am looking for bigger trades. It's the big trades that can really really move your account up to the next level. And I always think of it as like a hockey stick. So, you know, I was talking about, hey, you want to go from the lower left to the upper right of your screen, but every once in a while, if you can get a hockey stick like that or whatever you want to call that, it just makes a nice addition to your trading account. But there's a fine line. You don't want to go crazy, right? And, and it's got to be the right opportunity and it's got to be the right setup. And so what does that mean? So, so I keep an eye out for what I just simply call big trades. A couple of things have to come together for a big trade. It's not your normal setup, okay? But specifically, it's also something where I'm willing to take a bigger risk, you know? Instead of saying, oh yeah, I'm going to risk, you know, 2% of my account or 5% of my account, I'm looking for 15 to 20% exposure. Now, keep in mind, that's to start the trade. As the trade goes my way, you know, at some point, it could be 50% of my account. Okay, well, you know why? You know why is that? Well, if you put 20% of your account into something, and you know it goes up over 100%, then suddenly it's 40% of your account, right? So as it's going up, you're actually taking on more and more risk because it's becoming a larger and larger portion of your account. And then on something like this too, I'm not necessarily looking to do some massive, you know, theta decay trade. I am looking for something directional. Um, and again, last year this did happen multiple times in Tesla, which is great. And you know, I've been looking at Tesla this year, but Tesla just isn't the same stock this year as it was last year. Okay. And then the other thing is, I'm not looking for the hot meme stock of the day. And you know, I preface that by saying, look, don't get me wrong. You know, I would love to have bought you know 10,000 calls on GameStop when it was at twenty dollars and rode it all the way to four hundred, but um, that's not necessarily, you know, I'm not looking for those kind of situations. I'm keeping an eye out for them, but either, you know, that's one of those things where you're in it and you nailed it. That's awesome. Uh, but it didn't provide a setup that I normally look at, meaning like a daily squeeze and it just didn't happen for it. So for me, it's all about the setup. And if I'm looking at a big trade, I typically have to have a specific setup on the daily charts uh, that I'm looking for. And I don't really care necessarily what's happening in the news, although I do want to see how the indexes are doing. And as I was going through charts in March, the one lone stock that stood out was Google. All right, so why did it? So Google, for me, had a textbook bullish setup. But it had a little extra too. So textbook bullish for me is, okay, and, and this arrow is, this is the day, this is the moment in time that I started initiating a position. But if we look down here, first of all, there's a squeeze. The squeeze is these red dots. There is also what's these buy arrows here, which I like, you know, it's it, to time. And it's like, okay, it must be getting ready to take off. Um, I do like stocks that have a beta of over one, meaning that they're essentially stronger than the S&Ps. I liked it when the moving averages are stacked positive. That simply means that the eight 
period moving average is on top of the 21, which is on top of the 34, which is on top of the 55, which is on top of the 89, all right? And then I like to see price above the 21, and that just shows me a nice, solid uptrend. So uh, from here, what I'm also looking at is how is this stock reacting in relation to the market? And you'll notice here that Google you know, found a lot of support here, but if you guys remember, in early March, the NASDAQ was getting trashed. So this was incredibly bullish here that Google was actually ignoring the market sell-off and holding its own. When you see something like that, that is a special circumstance, okay? This is a hugely, hugely, hugely positive sign for a big trade. And so I started getting some big size here, right? And I posted this in the room, and this was on March 11th. 2021 said, all right, Google, this is one of my favorite longs. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going in 10% here. Uh, I did want to go out to April. So expiration, which was about 40 days from, uh, you know, the time when we first saw it. And I'm targeting 2230 to 2250 on the upside. So what I want to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to sell some wide put credit spreads with a nice juicy $20 credit. Uh, but the you know, but also I'm going to buy some some $100 wide out of the money call debit spreads, and then I'm also setting up some trades for some smaller accounts. Okay, awesome. What happens the next day? The next day the stock falls like $50 a share. All right, so this is always tough. I've been doing this a long time, but that's not what you want to see. All right, and uh, as I'm looking at this, and of course, you know, I'm doing this in a public forum. I'm doing this in our trading room, and it's like, oh my God, you know, John, you really mistimed this. I'm like, I really didn't, but this is, it just hasn't triggered yet. So when I'm looking at this, okay, it falls over $50 a share. You know, all it is, though, is a move back to the 21 period moving average. That's it. I mean, that's that's fine. It's just that it was, I was a little annoyed that it happened the day after I got in. I would rather have gotten in my initial position right there, of course, right? But again, it was just a one ATR move. What does that mean? Uh, ATR is the average true range. You can see here for Google is $49.70. And so when you're moving... You know, in this case, 50 bucks, that's normal. It's within the average true range, okay? So what I did here is I added to my position. Like, all right, on something like this, I never go all in at once. It's like, if I'm going to build up a position, let me, get, let me get half a position, and then I can add to it on pullbacks. Perfect. So then uh, from here, so we posted this. This is the very next day, and it's like, I'm picking up additional Google today on sale. And I went with these $150 wide call debit spreads, again for April, for $38. Um, and you'll notice here I also did a, a trade on GameStop, and we'll talk more about this in a second. All right, so now I go on vacation. It's my first vacation all year. Uh, my family and I pack up and we go to Mexico for an entire week. Generally when I go on vacation, I want to keep things light. I don't want to do a lot of trading. And in this case, I was like, all right, I've got a swing trade on in Google. There's really nothing to worry about. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to watch it. I love the setup. And then I also did a much smaller uh, trade on GameStop, which we'll look at here in a second. So what happened during my vacation is that the first day or two, Google rallied. And, I, you know, I'm not staring at the quotes while I'm on vacation, but I, I do check quotes after market. And I'm like, oh, awesome. That's great. I mean, it's just a relief to say, okay, it's working. I don't really have anything to worry about. But then the last three days of my vacation, Google fell over $100 a share. All right. And that's just no fun. I've been doing this a long time. It actually closed below the mean which isn't the end of the world, you know, as long as it's holding above this minus one ATR level and as long as the setup is still valid. So everything was fine. It was still in this buy zone, but basically, you know, my uh, week on vacation ended up being my worst trading week all year simply because I was sitting in a large position and I wasn't trading around it and I just held on. To add insult to injury, I had a regular size position in GME based on a two hour squeeze. And I thought, you know what, I'm going on, you know, I'm going on vacation, maybe I should dial it back. But look, what's this thing gonna do? Fall hundred dollars a share from two eighty to one eighty? Because that was the only worst case scenario. And yes, that's exactly what happened. Now, I didn't have a big position on this, but it added insult to injury. Here I am trying to relax on vacation. Um, and GameStop, instead of trading sideways or going higher, gets obliterated and Google pulls back. And again, those two contributed to being my worst week 
uh, P&L wise. Uh, but of course, with GameStop, well, I closed it out. Google, I didn't close out. It was just open losses that I was sitting on. All right, so my week on vacation turns out my worst week so far. Uh, I think it was down. I, I think my account was down like nine percent, eight percent, something for you know, it was pretty nasty. Um, and I didn't even trade, right? I was just holding on to my positions. And um, for Google, I had a big position on. At that point, I believe it was. It was right at 18%. It might have been 20%. And, you know, I closed out GameStop for a loss. And then, you know, I just focused on the beach. So I had fun with my family, but it was frustrating. And hindsight being 2020, I would have been 100% flat during my vacation, and I would have come back, and then I would have entered Google. Of course, that's hindsight being 2020. So I get back from vacation. I unwind. I look at Google again. I'm like, man, am I going to have to cut this thing loose? Because at this point, it was really not, you know, it was it was down close to minus one ATR. And if it closes below it, that's kind of my, you know, uncle point. And I look at it. And it's just like, wow, there is nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing. And I like the setup better than anything else in the market. I went through a ton of charts. There was nothing I could find that was as good as Google. So guess what? When Monday opened up, I added to it again, and at this point, Google was trading near $2,000. So here I am. It's you know March 22nd. I'm back from vacation. Uh, my only trading room trade is Google. This is the only position I have on in my entire um, account. Okay, and I still like it. And I'm saying like a close above 2050 opens the door to 2100, and from there it gets interesting, meaning that we could get to our targets. So I buy some more of call. I got 2100, 2200 call debit spreads, and then I got a bunch of these, the 2150s, 2250s for $11 because they dropped quite a bit since they're out of the money. And then I sold some more put credit spreads. So at this point, um, Google was holding its own, but the NASDAQ needed to get going. And this is really something, sometimes it's a disconnect because a lot of times traders will look at a stock and say, wow, the stock looks great. But you got to really look at the index that it's a part of too, because the index, think of the index as the ocean. And as the ocean bobs up and down, it's going to, all boats are going to rise and fall with the bobbing of the waves, with the bobbing of the ocean, with the coming and going of the tide, right? And if, if the NASDAQ you know, if Google is really going to get going, the NASDAQ did have to get going. Yes, Google was holding its own. Google was not selling off with the market, but it wasn't really getting anything going either. Okay. So now what we needed to do, or what I needed to see, was that the NASDAQ needed to get something going. All right. And I saw that it was about to, and I even got long the NASDAQ futures. Like, okay, this is it. We are getting ready to rock and roll. And did this in the rooms. So like, all right, I'm going to. You know, we got, and I'll look at, we'll, I'll blow this chart up here in a second. But I basically got long and put a stop at 12810 on the on the NASDAQ futures. And then the NASDAQ futures basically came down to uh, 12805, took out my stop, and then turned around. You know, it was just one of those, like, really? Is this really what's happening here? And it wasn't a big position, you know, just small size on the NASDAQ futures. I don't, I don't like to make big bets in the futures. But this is what I was looking at here. It's like, look at this huge, beautiful reversal in the NASDAQ. And we got a squeeze. And it looks really solid. And if we drill down to, like, the 78-minute chart, it's even more pronounced. And this hole right here is just kind of a, you know, a dive in here. So you got a small head and shoulders within a bigger head and shoulders. And, I mean, if this thing is poised to explode. And it all goes back to, you know what? I'm in the right stock. I've got a huge position on. Just stop screwing around with all these other dinky trades and strap in and hold on for the ride. All right. So Google... Um, you know, we're getting, it's like, all right, Google, you're going to do something. And we've been rallying, you know, we're going, we're going. And I think we're getting up to like 2050 and it's been awesome. And then on the 24th, Google started strong and then it started to sell off and then it turned into yet another losing day for Google. And I just, this day, I just remember, cause I have this in my trading journal and this was just a horrible thing that happened. I saw it happen and we have one of, um, 
you know, we have a place out in the country and we have some horses and it took us a long time to find, you know, like well-trained horses, you know, that were kind of retired. And this one, his name was Hot Rod. He's 18 years old, a beautiful animal. You know, my kids loved him. It was easy to ride and he broke his leg and I saw it happen. He was startled by some machinery. He like ran, he collided with another horse and there's these big metal stakes in the fence and he got his leg caught on it and it just snapped below the knee. And, uh, you know, I knew, I was just like, there, oh, uh, you know, it was just your heart sinks. And, and then I'm having to get in the room and I'm calling the vet and, you know, the vet is texting me, we need to put him down. I'm so sorry. And I, I, that was the only day I think in the history of my career that I've bailed on the room. I was like, guys, I can't do this. So we went and put down the horse. It was super sad. You know, we're all crying. You know, it was just, it was, it was just my journal entry that day and I'm a very positive person and even the worst things I take in stride I was just the only thing I wrote is shittiest day in a long long time and it, and it was there's just there's just no two ways around it so so the next week is it's hurry up and wait and I'm sitting here again this is just I'm holding on to my position and I'm waiting for the Nasdaq is this gonna get going I mean it's just it's just come on and I'd been doing a class and now it's like I'm out of the class and let's just let's see if this thing can get going and so here here we are on the 25th and you know I like I like what's going on here in the Nasdaq I mean I know we're flushing but it's okay and for Google I'm just holding on for dear life and let's see you know let's see what can happen here so on April 1st finally we got the Nasdaq breakout Okay, and again, this was after another week of doing nothing. Finally, it broke out. So keep in mind now, I've been holding on to Google for three weeks, and during this entire three weeks, this has been a losing trade. Okay, there's not, I have not been positive on Google yet. I've bought the dips. My original position is underwater. I've got a great, you know, I've got a good average cost, but I'm just, you know, I'm losing money and I'm not, you know, I, I don't have straight calls and I've got put credit spreads that are actually doing okay. You know, with the call debit spreads, especially the out of the money ones that are just losing a little bit of money every day, every day, every day. So finally on this day, Google takes off and it closes at 2130, which is 15 points below new all time highs. Remember I added to this, my third ads were when this was at 2000. All right. So we're $130 off of that level. All right. So finally, Finally, this is, I think, the, you know, first day after I got it. Uh, remember, after I got it, it dropped $50 the next day. I think this is the first day after I got it since March 12th that I'd been up on the trade. All right, that's a long time to hold on to this. And so it's like, okay, it's the conviction that this setup is still valid, right? There's nothing wrong with this setup. So so here we are on this day. So finally now I've, you know, I've got my my capital you know, I've been buying this, I've been holding through all this, and now, you know, not, I've got all my capital returned to me that I invested, plus a decent profit at this point. I think at this point it was up, you know, half a million dollars. It's like, man, I should just take the money and run, right? That's a thought. But, you know, the squeeze is still valid. It hasn't fired. And if we can break above these highs, you know, my original target of 2250 is is still in play. So, you know, and again, I'm just kind of going through, you know, I'm a, I'm a human being. This is, these are feelings that I'm having, right? It's like, but at the end of the day, anxiety and annoyance have nothing to do with the trade. Absolutely nothing. Is the setup still valid? Yes. What do you do? There's nothing to do but hold. After all this, the setup is still valid and it looks great. Okay. Now, in addition, at this point, um, I bring up Amazon because we also, Amazon started to look good here too. Now I already had a big position in Google, so I didn't want to add another big position, but I was willing to take a normal 5% position in Amazon across my Tastyworks account and across my Thinkorswim account. So now things are looking good. I am locked and loaded with Google. I've got a new position with Amazon. And what happens? Well, first of all, let's look at Amazon here. So Amazon basically was the NASDAQ. So you remember that head and shoulders reversal, and now Amazon is breaking out. We got the squeeze. And so I'm, the idea here is, you know, here it is at um, 31.50, give or take, on April 1st. And even though it's had a good rally already, you know, it's time to get in. And, you know, it's everything's teeing up here. So in the rooms, like for Amazon, I'm going with a 6% position. I'm going to spread it out across a $100 wide debit spread and then a 25 and a 10 wide. So I got the 31.50, 32.50, 
the 3175, 3200. And now my positions going into the weekend at this point were Google and Amazon. So I was pretty much long tech. So then we have the long three day three day weekend. The markets are closed on Friday, you know. So I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, well, what happens if when the markets finally open on Monday, right? And what happened was we had this phenomenal breakout. Google's up over ninety dollars to new all time highs, and Amazon is up seventy dollars. Everything looked great, and I decided to continue holding. Okay, now on a day like this, I do not stare at the PNL. Those are big numbers, okay? This is a big, big day. Um, I think it was a $3 million day or, or something insane. It was just, it was a big day. And on those days like that, I don't watch the PL because then you're going to sit there going like, oh my God, it's up $3 million. Now it's only up $2.5 million. That was half a million dollars. I need to get out. And I just, I want to stick with the setup. So I just didn't even look at it. And, you know, by the time the day was over, I realized kind of too late the market was closed and i was you know i was ball i was ballparking how much i was up i'm like oh my god i'm up four and a half million dollars four point two million dollars in my toss account and i'm up eight hundred thousand dollars in my tastyworks account and i realize this after the market is closed right it's like a five million dollar trade i'm like oh my gosh so i had trouble sleeping uh, which is rare for me uh, and i know that at that point you know, if you have trouble sleeping, you got to sell down to the sleeping point. And I was like, okay, what happens if both stocks get downgraded? And you can see now I'm not thinking straight. But that was just because, like, wow, I wasn't, I didn't realize how well this trade was doing. And, you know, Google was at 3 ATR, which is three times the average true range away from the 21 period moving average. And at that point, there's really not a lot of upside. So I also realized, though, that if I could just hold on to it into April expiration, there there actually was another one and a half million dollars to be made just in collecting theta, you know, if Google could close by 2250. But at that point, I don't know. I didn't think that I was capable of holding on to it. I'd been through so much. The meat of the trade was there. And at that point, you know, I was like, well, let's just see what happens the next morning. So Tuesday, April 6th, both Google and Amazon, they start off light. It's a quiet day. They're both up like $10. Then they're down a few dollars. And then they're both down like $15. And then they're back up to scratch. And, you know, this went on until about lunch. And about that time, I started thinking, you know what? Even though I like this, this is the biggest trade of my career. We are, in fact, at 3 ATR, which is a target that I like you know, let's do this. I'm going to close out the call debit spreads and I will keep the put credit spreads. And Amazon has room to move, so I'm going to keep Amazon. And so if we look here at Google, I mean, this is where I got out. And I'm looking at this going, well, gosh, you know, we've had this big move. We're basically, you know, near the target that I was looking for and there's nothing else to do here. And so at that point, I'm going to get out of my directional trades, but my put credit spreads, you know, all my put credit spreads I sold, you know, here, you know, there's still three, four dollars left in those. And that was decent money. So I, you know, I, I thought that was easy to keep. So at this point, if we look at my Tastyworks account, so here's my Google trade. It's probably a little hard to see, but you can see right here, this is the day I started closing it out. I was up $818,000 on all those trades. On Amazon, I was up $400,000. I think uh, Amazon actually turned into a million dollar trade. So even though it's like, hey, Google was a $5 million trade, Amazon was almost like a million dollar trade across both accounts, uh, which was a nice bonus. But keep in mind, Amazon, I was only in it for like three days. So that was a lot easier to hold than Google. Um, so on this, what I did is I closed out the call debit spreads. So you can see here basically anything with calls, I closed those out. And then the put credit spreads I kept because there was still a little bit of juice there. You know, the 2000, 2050s, I had zero concerns. Well, not zero concerns, but pretty close to zero concerns that were going to go all the way back to 2000. And there was still a little bit of premium there. And all I had to do was hold on. And I, I could handle that. If we looked at Google in toss that day. Here, where this is where I got out at 22.17, give or take, and uh, 4.3 million dollars, almost 4.4 million dollars on that, um, which which was which was crazy, right? So you can see that the you know like the uh, the put here that I sold at 20 was at 250. So yeah, that's another. You know that's a that's a that's a, that's another twenty five. You know that's that's real money if you're just patient. And so I did sit on those. Um, the calls here. This is actually part of a debit spread. It's just it it was broken apart. Um, 
the 2050, 21, you know, these calls were at about max profit. The 2150, 2250s, you know, these are the ones I got like at 950 and 10. These were trading near $60. You know, those were some, those were some big winners there. Uh, and, you know, there's a whole list of those. So, so the total profits on Google was actually a little more than $5 million across both accounts. I think it was maybe $5.1 million total. And I had the $1 million ish. I'd have to, I have to go back and double check, but I know it was, you know, like four or $500,000 in the Tastyworks account and a little bit more in the Toss account, but um, it was a much easier trade to hold on to. And and then continue to hold the put credit spreads. So, so the couple of things here that although this trade was bigger than my $3.7 million Tesla trade, which was last year, which was my biggest trade up to date at that point, this trade was a lot harder. For the Tesla trade, I timed it great, and I only had to hold on to it for three days. And for this Google trade, I was in it for nearly a month. Okay, And generally, for larger trades, I plan on holding for a shorter duration because it's just easier to hold big trades for shorter durations. I'm looking for that quick pop. In this case, I was hoping for the quick pop, but I didn't get it. Okay, so this is a case study in, you know, what do you do if the market doesn't do exactly what you thought it was going to do, right? And in this case, it's like, well, gosh, I didn't get the big pop. Do I bail on the trade? And what it came down to was that the setup was not invalid. The setup was still incredibly valid. And I just needed to sit through the anxiety of wondering if it was going to work out, sit through the uncomfortableness of wondering if it was going to work out versus running away from that uncomfortableness. Okay. And that was what I was very conscious of. Like, okay, I'm in a big trade here and it's not working out yet. There's nothing wrong with the setup. And I'm just going to learn to sit with this feeling of, of uncomfortableness a little bit longer than normal. Now, what I could have done is I could have just said, you know what? This anxiety is too much. I'm going to sell this down back to a 5% position because I don't have this anxiety. I don't have this uncomfortableness with a 5% position. But it's such a good setup. And again, remember, not only was it a squeeze, but Google did not go down with the NASDAQ. Okay. That's, that's huge. I can't tell you how important that is. That's like a safety net. It's like, man, if the NASDAQ goes down, Google's going to be okay. And if the NASDAQ turns around, Google's going to explode higher. That's why I did such a big position on this. So when you see these kind of moments in time, you've got to take advantage of them because they don't come around very much. So at the end of the day, the setup itself was never invalidated. And I held on as long as the setup was valid, which is a trader is the best you can hope for. You don't want to get tricked by those pesky emotions. So here's the exits on these. And I did this in the room on, on April 6th. So um, the $2,100, $2,200 call sold at $78.10. The $2050, $2125 at $70, which was, you know, the max profit on those was $75. Uh, the 2150 2250 calls, uh, 55 bucks, And... And then some of the other ones here too. So all in all, just it was it was pretty amazing. So last night, so April seventh, so so on April sixth, I got rid of the directional trades on Google. You know, I booked most of the profits, and what I had left was Amazon, and I had the put credit spreads on Google. So I slept really well this night, and you know, I woke up and I saw that Google's trading around twenty two thirty. So had I held on, I would have immediately made a lot more money. Had I just been able to hold on one more night. But at that point, I was totally fine with it because we did get to the target that I was looking for. Twenty, about twenty-two hundred to twenty-two fifty was that range. We're at three ATR, and there's a there's a saying from Paul Tudor Jones, and it says there's no training for the last third of a move, and I totally agree with that. The Google had gone up three ATR. And I was in no man's land. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen at 3 ATR. Is it going to go all the way back? Is it going to go higher? You just don't know. 3 ATR is a good target. So, you know, you do the best you can. So, um, I, you know, I would go back and say, you know what? Getting out was the right call in that at that point. Yeah, you know, it looked... It, it held up well after that, but who knows what would happen, right? I made, I made the money. I got to the target I was looking for. Take the money and run. So... So what are the biggest questions to consider in a situation like this? Because overall, I mean, I do, I would rather be in one or two big trades and focus my bets 
than, say, have 30 trades, okay? Well, and there's pros and cons of both. And I'm the first to admit that. If you have 30 trades, your goal is wealth preservation. You want to protect what you have, okay? You're diversifying. If you've got a couple of focus bets, you're looking at wealth creation. So could something go horribly wrong? Of course. That's why I had, you know, one big trade and not five big trades on. Um, and if Google, you know, if I'm in Google and the market's going down, yes, I will. I can hedge. I can, you know, sh say short some NASDAQ futures or something like that, which I didn't do during this time. Uh, it didn't, you know, the, the, the futures weren't really going, you know, there were, there were some ugly days, but they weren't crazy ugly days. So, so the idea with this in terms of questions and things like that, uh, to consider, and I, cause I always, you know, when I'm trading, I always review it. And it's like, I, you know, I ask myself, did I get out too early? You know, did I bail? We were talking in the room today and someone's like, gosh, you know, I'm always, when I, my profits are small and my losses are large. All right. And so you want to ask yourself, did you get out too early? And in this trade, I said, no, I did not get out too early. You know, I got out at 3 ATR. I held on into 3 ATR. That's the most, you know, you, that's, that's great. That's like the most you're ever going to get from a trade. I followed a setup and I didn't get out. And that's really the key with this. If you follow the setup, if you follow your plan, the money tends to take care of itself. And I'm talking through all the emotions just to let you know, it's like it happens with everyone. And obviously, you know, the bigger, you know, the, the larger and larger sums of money that you start trading, you kind of have to go through this plateau of, you know, it's I joke that the first time I lost $1,000, I threw up, but the next time it wasn't so bad. And it's the same thing. It's like my first million dollar trade in 2014 was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then by the time I did another one, it was like, it was still cool, but it wasn't as crazy and as amazing as that first time, right? And so you're building up your... Um, fortitude of what's normal. You're expanding your concept of what's normal. And, you know, if you think of it, it's just money, right? It's just another zero. I have a friend of mine. He's a huge trader, like big, big trader. And he jokes with me sometimes. He's like, when are you going to increase your size? It's just another zero. I was like, yeah, yeah okay. Um, but that's how he looks at it. It's just another zero. So just, you know, keep in mind a lot of this is psychology and stuff like this too. Okay, so the next question is, these are questions I ask myself, right? Was it too big of a trade? Did I get emotional? And I would say, yes, you know what? It was probably a bit too big in the beginning. I had to pay attention to it during vacation. You know, I in retrospect, I would have just waited to add to it when I got back from vacation. Um, and it was starting to impact my mood the longer I stayed in it. You know, smaller trades don't do this to me. So I would say that, did I get, you know, was this trade a little bit too big? And I would say, uh, and I would say, if I'm being honest with myself, yes. Did I hold through the uncomfortableness? Yes. Um, is that going to make me a better trader for the next time I'm in this situation? Yes. Uh, but if I could have done about three quarters of that size, it would have been easier to hold on to. What would I do different? The only thing I would have done different is patient with entries, which means buying closer to the mean. If you guys recall, my first entries were at plus one ATR. So this is the mean. Okay, and then this is minus one ATR. And I just consider this the buy zone. So the mean is like the 21 period moving average. And then, you know, this is one ATR, one average true range away from it to the upside, and one average true range away to it at the downside. And in an uptrend, you know, the best buys are at the mean or down here to minus one ATR. And my first buy was way up here. So I bought that knowing I'd probably have to hold, you know, you know, I was like, oh, well, maybe it's going to go right now. Had I been more patient and focused my buys down here, that would have been a lot easier. All right. But, you know, you never know. Sometimes things just take off without you. Right. But I could have been in hindsight a little more patient. But what's the lesson learned in this? The lesson learned in this is that it's really hard to get a perfect entry. But if you've got a good setup, OK, I, you know, I would rather have sloppy entries and a great setup and hold through you know, my jumping the gun that have great entries on a sloppy setup that doesn't even have a chance of working out, if that makes sense. So, so I don't mind holding through the pain and suffering, but I'm always open to the idea of like, could we, you know, could we reduce this pain and suffering a little bit? So what now? As of right now, I'm looking for more big trades. I don't see a 
big one at the moment, although I'm keeping an eye on Amazon, because at this point, Google has made new all-time highs, and Microsoft has made new all-time highs, and Amazon has not. So I think that's the next one. So I'm keeping an eye out for that. Otherwise, I'm looking at what I would just simply call normal 5% setups. And when I see those, I post them in the room, and that's fine for now. Get back to you know cranking out that 2.5% a week, sometimes 5% a week, while I'm waiting for that bigger trade to set up. And I always say, like this is like hunting. You know, you want to be patient, and you know you want to be sitting there ready with a loaded gun. And when the and I'm not really a hunter, but this is the analogy: when the elephant comes by, you're ready to go. But if the elephant comes by, and you know you're screwing around in the sand looking for beetles, or your gun's not loaded, you're going to miss it. You may not even see it walk by because you weren't even paying attention. And so you know you get out of a big trade, you take catch your breath, and you get ready for the next setup. And that's what I like to do: is I find the setups and then I post them in our trading room. So if you're not familiar with our trading room, um, there is myself in there and a group of, gosh, I think it's 18 of us now. And we're all just kind of watching the markets. We're posting our ideas. You know, we're not... We're not on the mic all the time because that would drive us insane. Uh, I'll go, I'm, you know, I'm on the mic a couple hours a week and I'm talking what I'm looking at. But when I'm off the mic, I'm, you know, I'm posting and everybody else is posting. It's like, you know, when I was doing my Google trades, I was never on the mic. I was just posting like, hey, here's the alert. And if you've got the app, it goes to your phone. You know, it's a push notification. This is what I'm doing. So if you're interested in stuff like this, this is, you know, we, we think this is fun. Um, we've got... Uh, you know, we, we do mostly options in the options room, but we also trade other asset classes. And then we do have a trial, and you can see the link down here. And this will set you up to start a trial to our room if you'd like to check it out. So anyway, trading is a lot of fun. It's our passion. We do it because we love it. You know, you can see from my trading, I don't, you know, I'm not doing it because I have to do it monetarily. We just, we like doing it. I think by having to kind of throw out what I'm doing, I've got to, it, sh it makes me sharp. It's like, it makes me a better trader. Cause I'm like, okay, if I'm going to put this out there, I got to make sure that it's a good setup. And so I like that too. So I think it's a nice symbiotic relationship where uh, having to put out the trades improves my own trading. But then, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years now. And if you're newer and you haven't seen all this crazy stuff that the market does, um, you know, you can, it's a very, you can learn a lot of painful lessons and we are here and I am here to lessen that, to lessen the pain. You know, there's times to load the boat and go long. There's other times to go short, like this market's done. And there's other times to step aside. There's three positions you can have. You can be long, you can be short, or you can be flat and knowing when to be flat and knowing when not to do anything is just as important, if not more important than knowing when to go for the kill. All right. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a fun and crazy trade, and I'm looking forward to doing the next one with you uh, right here in our trading room. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me over.